years. I often use it in a first meeting with people if they're considering uh, divorce or family mediation, and many people don't know what to expect. Most people have never sat in a mediator's office before. So at some point, I might draw this circle. And it, it's not all filled in like this. I start over here. I say, well, I'm not a therapist. Uh, but let me start uh, with talking about relationships. A friendship is one type. We all have friends. We know what that is. And I'll write over here. There's another type of relationship. I've seen it described in the literature as positive intimacies, which, of course, we know better as the marriage relationship. I might put in parentheses the marriage relationship. Or if they're not married but their parents, uh, they, at some point, they did have an intimate relationship that maybe they hope would continue. They had a child. And uh, that's certainly different than friendship. Unfortunately, many marriages go back and forth between good times and bad times, but some marriages get stuck up in the upper right-hand quadrant, and every interaction, <coughs> or the preponderance of the action interactions, are negative. And if you're at that spot where most every interaction in your relationship is negative, that's not a very good place to be. Uh, that spot is often where uh, People go see the therapist, or they see their 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 priest, their minister, their rabbi. They go um, hire an attorney. They might wander into the mediator's office. 150 years ago, they would just abandon the family. It's too much work. I, I've got to get out of here. And then I like to move over here and say there's another type of relationship. We've always referred to it as a business type relationship. And the interesting thing about a business-type relationship that I think makes it different from these three, most business-type relationships do have written rules. Well, certain, you, you can certainly take a new job somewhere and not right away get handed a policy manual or procedures handbook, but you will learn quickly what the rules are, otherwise you won't keep that job. <laughs> and if you think about it then, written rules, and then I'll take my pen and on the flip chart I'll write over here. Written rules are basically agreements that people make about their conduct in the future. Written rules are agreements that people make about their conduct in the future. And I say that's what I do for a living, day in and day out. I'm trying to help people make agreements about their conduct in the future. And even though I don't do therapy, I think it's very therapeutic to help them move beyond or move out of what I call the chaos and uncertainty of the negative intimacy what's going to happen, how is this going to work, what's the effect this is going to be on our kids, or how will I support myself since I dropped out of the workforce to raise two kids, how am I going to support, how, how is this going to work? It's a very fearful, painful time, and, a, and, and I think this goes counterclockwise, so if I can get people over here as quickly as I can by helping them make a series of ground rules about their conduct in the future, I can stay mostly focusing on the future. I don't have to go back into, well, tell me the long history of how terrible the past was. That, just, that usually doesn't help. But what does help is I can say, well, what would you like him to do differently so the parenting will work better? What would you like her to do differently? And so, as we'll see throughout the morning, most of the mediation process focuses on the future, not so much on the past. And uh, I'll sometimes leave this up, and people will say, uh, could we get back to those business rules? And if you think about it, a parenting plan with all sorts of uh, paragraphs about uh, schedules and holidays and weekly schedules and transportation and how often do we communicate and how are we going to communicate, it's just a series of ground rules about your conduct.